welcome to episode 34 of the Arctic Knitting Podcast. My name is Emilia and I am, as always, coming to you from the Arctic where I live with my boyfriend and our son Ludwig. I'm just going to really quick put up on the screen where you can find me on social medias because it's just easier than talking about it for several minutes. So today it's going to be, I think it's going to be a rather short episode. I'm going to start with saying thank you to both new and returning viewers. I'm so glad that you are taking some time out of your day to spend here with me. Be sure to join the Ravelry group. I really enjoyed chatting with all of you guys. So head on over there if you want to take part of knit longs and giveaways and all that sort of fun. Today I'm going to talk with you about what I'm wearing. I'm going to talk about a couple of works in progress. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about a knitting retreat that uh, I'm hosting along with a couple of friends of mine in my hometown. And that is about it. Maybe I'll do a little bit of Arctic living, but I don't really think so. Uh, if you have subscribed to my channel on YouTube, you will have seen my 17th of May blog. 17th of May is Norway's Constitution Day, where we all go out in folk parades and eat cakes and ice cream and we have so much fun and I am in that video I am showing off my bunad which is a traditional Norwegian folk dress that my grandma made for me so be sure to check that out if you are interested in well anything that's craft related because that's that is an amazing dress so I'm just going to start with what I am wearing I am wearing this shawl that is designed by me. I have finally sewn in all of the ends. Let's see if I can show you a little bit closer. So this is a design that I made recently. And I haven't written it up yet. I am planning on doing it every day, but it's just these are just packed. And especially now with the knitting retreat coming up and I am going to sell my hand at yarn there so I am I have way too much to do but this will be written up I have a couple of test knitters if you're interested in test knitting this let me know I need a couple more test knitters uh, the yarn I use for this this is a shawl knit in 3.5 millimeter needles and the yarn that I use for this is Filcolano Arvetta this is a commercial sock yarn, and it is one of my favorite commercial sock yarns, and I love this color. This is so my color. It is not quite as brown as it looks like on the camera. It is more like an ochre yellow. But I love this. I haven't been wearing it too much because I am taking it to the retreat, and I want it to be fresh and crisp for that. So, yeah. So I'm just going to dive right into the finished objects that I have none of. I'm going to dive right into works in progress. I have a couple of works in progress. I'm just going to take them up. I'm going to start with this. This is the long term project. Let's see what is this. I have been putting in a couple of squares on my sock yarn blanket because memories, which you can see is getting quite big. So the squares that I have added, let me see, I know I think I say this every time I show you this, but the way that I'm doing it, this is the middle, and this part, this part here, is my own, uh, is the yarn that I have either used in my own project and some of my early dyeing when I was still dyeing with food colors, I have a couple of those in here. So this is like yarn that I have worked with myself and the rest of the blanket is yarns that I have gotten in swaps or gifts or this is from this part is from my opal Christmas calendar. So what I have been putting in lately is this one which is socks that rock. This is an amazing yarn. It is quite a round yarn. It is merino nylon, I think. I will think it's that because I have knitted socks from this. And it is quite a round yarn, but this yarn is so amazing. Even though it is merino, it actually makes for quite warm socks. 
and I'm not sure where you live in the world, but my standards for warm socks are quite high. I normally don't find merino like warm enough. I wear two pair of socks. <laughs> but this yarn makes amazing socks. It is socks that rocks, colorway is haystack, I don't remember anything else. Sorry. I don't remember the days. It's the normal sock days. This other one is Colorway Dove. I once again don't remember the name of the base, but it is also a normal sock yarn. And it is by Hedgehog Fibers. I have made socks in this as well. This one is, what's it called? It's a commercial yarn. It is called hmm, No, I can't remember, but I have made socks from this one as well. I have also added this one and I'm going to put information on the screen if I can remember. It is by the Yarnery it's called and the colorway is Rusty Wagon Wheel. I think I made socks from this. Yes, I did. I made socks and wear, I wear them a lot. And the, I love this color. It's just Rusty Wagon Wheel is so describing. I have also added in another part of the blanket. Let's see. Where is it? There it is. All of this. The top two rows here are yarns that I got from in a swap that I did with. Oh, I'm blanking on her name. Hannah of Rose Hip Island and Rose Hip. She has a Rose Hip Knits at. Rose Hip Knits podcast and Rose Hip Island Etsy shop. And this is yarn that I got in a swap that I did with her, so I decided to get them all or have them, have them all together so that this part of the blanket will remind me of her and I will remember where these come from. Because if I put one here and one there, I will forget. But now this part is, is Hannah's part of my blanket. I have also added one square of this. This one is also from Hannah, but this one, the green one, and that is from, I don't remember the name of the dyer, but I have it here, because Melissa of the Spicy Homemaker, she was doing a swapless swap thing, uh, it's quite, quite a long time ago, where everyone was to put in a photo that they would get the inspiration, or that the dyer, let's see if I can find mine, that the dyer would be inspired by to dye color or to dye yarn. This one is from Green Girl 34. The dyer is Bohemia Fibers. She is an amazing dyer. She makes some. Go check out her website because she dyes yarn that is inspired by photos and it looks amazing. Um, let's see Mrs. Bones bags. That's Spicy Homemaker. It's a pretty color. I think this is mine. This is Emilia Biono, which was my Ravelry name at the time. This is my color. I will see if I can find... I'm not sure that I will be able to, but I will see if I can find the photo that this was inspired by. Anyway, what we did was that we, everyone, 20 persons, put in a photo each in a thread and Bohemia Fibers, I think her name is Amy. She dyed up one skein of each, one skein this, um, that was inspired by each color, each photo. And she divided them into 25 gram mini skeins and she sent everyone 25 gram mini skeins. So I have 20 skeins of this. I think, yes, it's 5 grams. No, it's 10 grams. They are, he shared two groups. And she do, I think Bohemia Fiber has been doing this with several podcasters, and it's such an amazing idea. But what she does normally is that she has two groups, and one will get five gram mini skeins, and one will get ten gram mini skeins. And I use four grams for each of my squares, so I was planning on joining in the five gram mini skeins group, but um, so were several other people, so it was full by the time I got there. 
But I got 10 grand mini skins and I'm really happy with that now because I can put the rest of the mini skins into my crochet blanket. So that is one of my work in progress. The other one is now just laying here in my basket, but it has been living in this project bag that I will talk more about later. It's a new project bag. But you can see what this is. This is the same shawl that I am wearing. It is almost done. You can see from this that there is three repeats. So one, two, three repeats of the chart of slip stitches. And I have just started the third repeat here. So it will soon be done. I think I have done it the exact the same way. I was thinking that maybe I would, on this, I would take the purple, let the purple build the slip stitches, but when I got to it, I decided, no, it has to be the blues. So this is my hand dyed yarn, because I'm writing up a pattern. I'd like to have, it, not necessarily my yarn, but I want to be able to write um, yarn in the in the pattern that isn't commercial yarn. I really like to put in into that yarn and that'll be it this time, it's my yarn. I'm knitting this on Knit Pro Sings, which I got as a Christmas gift from my son Ludwig. I think he had a little bit of help from his father because my son is almost two years old and it was 18 months by Christmas, so I don't think that he bought it himself, but I was happy anyway. This is the yarn that I'm using, I'm coming closer. See, I'm almost out of the blue. This shawl is using almost two full skeins. I have put them a little bit below. It's using almost a full skein of this, not quite as much as this. I think it's about 50 grams of, in this, the white, 100 grams of the main color. And the reason that it won't use fully 100 grams is because I decided that it will be easier for everyone if it doesn't require 100 grams, more like 90 grams, because then you have a little bit, you have a little bit to go on if you have a little bit shorter sh yardage, and if you, you will have a mini skin left that you can put in your blanket. Uh, so this is my base that is called Fjell. This is a, one of my favorite colors at the moment. It is a beautifully icy blue, speckled with blues and magenta and purples. And it's just so pretty. It's called Frozen Toes. This is a semi-solid that I have called Viola. See, I just really, really want to show you. I love how this knit up. I think, because this isn't really a color that I wear too much. I love the color, but it doesn't suit me, I think. So I think I will dye up another colorway with the, exactly the same technique so that I will get this yarn in another color and I will make myself a sweater or a cardigan but I haven't decided which colors and it ain't going to happen this week because I have very much to do. So that is my second work in progress. My third work in progress is almost done. This is also knit from my handed yarn. This is knit from my Norwegian yarns. I have decided that I will name this yarn um, Askeladden or Ashlad, the Ashlad, which is a fairy tale or a story by uh, Asbjörn Snomo, which are a couple of guys that traveled all around Norway in the time that we were not a part of Denmark anymore, and I gathered together all the details and put them together in collections, and one of them was the stories about the Ashlad or Askeladden. So what I'm going to do for my, from all of my own from now on is that I'm going to put the labels on in Norwegian, and then I will put the English descriptions in like brace brackets, bracelets, brackets, behind, so you will get both languages. Because uh, this is 100% pure Norwegian wool. This is pelsul or pelbul. 
And because it is Norwegian wool, I decided that I want to have labels in Norwegian with Norwegian as the main language. And I have also decided that I'm going to call this one for Askeladden, which is the Ashlad, as I said in English. And the other base in that is Norwegian yarn will be called Kvitebjørn Kong Valmon, which is King Valmon the White Bear, and it is also a folk tale by Asbjørn Snemo. So I'm going to use these two yarns is also going to get their own range of colors because they take dyes so differently than the normal merino yarns. So they are going to get their own range of colors which will also get names inspired by Norwegian folk tales. So I just think that's... I feel like I should name everything in English but I just feel like I can't do it with this because it is just so Norwegian I have to keep the Norwegian names. But I will put English names on as well. So this is Aslab or Askeladden. This is a rusty red that I just recently dyed up and I I just been experimenting. I'm not selling this yarn yet. And this is the undyed yarn. So what I am knitting, you ask. I am knitting a hat and I am almost done. I could have been done but when I got to this point I realized that I would need to get over to VPNs and I didn't have VPNs available at the moment. But it's only a couple of decreases left and it will be done. Now let me see if I can show you. Keep in mind that this hasn't been blocked or anything. So this is what it looks like. It is going to be a fairly tight hat and it will have a pom-pom. This is the style that Norwegian hats very often have. And this is... I'm going to put the pattern out without the yarn. I was maybe planning on doing like... Um, kit, yarn kits, but I have decided that I'm going to put it out without the yarns because some people will find this yarn quite itchy. It is a rustic yarn and it is quite a rusty yarn. It's not, it's not anywhere near merino. So I will put this out without the kit so that you can buy it to make in merino if you are sensitive to rustic yarn. Although I would recommend it to try all sort of strand knitted with rusty yarn. You can see how Beautiful the stitches look. That's it. The contrast between this color is actually quite much better in real life than what you can see on the camera and I can't wait to get this done and take a couple of photos on, of it. It's going to have a pom-pom and basically what I did. That's it. I have knitted a rib, stuff it here, knitted a rib, knitted a pattern needed another rib. Then I start working on the inside. So this part is double. I'm not sure. I think I might have to do some adjustments to the pattern because you can see it rolls up a little bit. So I think I will might sorry. I think I will have to do a pearl roll just to make like a folding edge down here. But because this is stranded knitting this part of the yarn, this part of knit is held double. It is two strands of yarn all the way around here, but it is also double layered. <laughs> so basically there it, it's the layer is triple here, which are the part that goes over your ear. Also this yarn uh, will felt lightly. It's not something that we'll put in the washer. I normally do and it almost turns out okay almost every time but it's not recommended because it can felt but this kind of will felt in use as well it's not going to be like heavy felted but it will be softer on the inside and it will have kind of not a felted look but it will have a felted feel especially on the inside and i have forgot where i was going with that but this is the that i'm going to bring needles down with me when I go down now and down 
then I go downstairs after I have recorded and I think I just finished this up. The last time I was knitting on this I was actually in my car. I wasn't driving. But I didn't have needles I wanted and I will not do a magic loop on 40 centimeter needles. So I will, I would just have to wait. And that's it for my knitting. Even though it's been two weeks. I had to cancel last week's episode just because I was not feeling well. I have just been, my throat was itching and I didn't feel that my voice was very well. So I decided to not make a podcast. And this is all anything that I have been doing. I thought that I would also show you that I have been doing some sewing. And this is the project bag that I'm using. I said last time that I was that I need more project bags and I have been checking online to buy some but I you can't really buy more stuff. So I decided to see my fabric stash. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to sew as much as I can of it into project bags and clothes for Ludwig and clothes for me and maybe something for my boyfriend and anything else we need because I really want to it's not like I want to get rid of fabric and don't have any fabric anymore but I have way too much and I don't sew that much but this one has a blue lining and a blue zipper and this one I'm using myself I also have this one which is a smaller version it has a blue zipper and the same blue lining. I have a pink one. Oops. Pink one. Pink, 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 pink polka dots. I have this one. Which my boyfriend absolutely loves. It has fake leather. A black zipper. And I think he kind of wanted it, but then I showed him the inside. <laughs> I really love this. It's just so tough and macho on the outside. And then it's just all pink and polka dotty on the inside. So I really love that one. I have also made a little notion pouch, which has been lined. Let's see if I can just turn this around. With some minions. So that's what I have been sewing. I am not currently planning on putting project bags up in my store because I don't really have the time to follow up on that. So it's not going to be something that I do regularly at least. But I'm going to bring them with me to the knitting retreat, which I'm going to talk about next, to sell there, I think. It depends if I can sew enough because I have all these plants and not much time. So. So the knitting retreat that I have been mentioning all throughout this episode is called Stick in Nidna Sol, which is, can be translated into Knit in the Midna Sun or Midna Sun Knitting. It is hosted in my city. I am hosting it with Renate and Lina, which are two friends of mine. Renate was the one that took initiative to do this and I, of course, the moment she asked me if I wanted to help her, I said yes, <laughs> of course I do. So we have been planning like crazy. It is going to be ha about 120 to 130 people. We are meeting up in a hotel and it's going to be from Friday to Sunday. There are people coming from all around the country and there's even one person coming from Sweden. So if you are watching this, welcome. We can't wait to have you over here. And it is going to be lots of like socializing. We have rented a big hall or ballroom thing. And it's going to be lots of socializing. It's going to be workshops where people can learn how to do. I'm going to. I'm. I have signed up for a workshop in drop spindling. I'm going to try to spin, and I. I'm so excited! I can't wait. There is also going to be workshops in. Um, brioche. It's going to be brioche one and brioche two. That one, where one is for, for beginners and one is for those who have either taken the beginners class on Saturday and want to take the other one on Sunday, or people that have tried a little bit and want to learn more. There is going to be a class in like tips and tricks where it's going to be about magic loop amongst other things. There is going to be a 
What's it called? I don't know. I don't remember the word. I'll put it up on the screen, which is going to be on Saturday, ni Saturday night. It is going to be a marketplace where I'm going to sell my hand at the arm, so I am dying like crazy. And there is going to be well, lots, of, lots of other fun stuff. We have some surprises that I can't really talk about because no of the attendees will know about them before they come there. So it will be so much fun. We have a couple of spots open, so if you are in an area nearby Narvik or want to take a plane ride to get there, uh, I'm going to put a link to where you can sign up in the show notes and feel free to ask me anything you like about this and anything else. But I, it is, it's going to be so much fun. I really can't wait. I'm so excited. I can barely sleep at night. I'm so excited. I have only been to one like bigger knitting retreat. The knitting retreat that I go to is normally about eight to fifteen people, so it's more like a local knit night. But sometimes we rent a space and we stay there for the whole weekend. But I have only been to one bigger knitting retreat, and that was in two thousand nine, I think. So it's been eight years, and I, I really can't wait. I have I hope. That I sell loads of yarns so that I can buy a uh, Canon G7X to make the, this podcast higher quality. And I have a dream of going to Edinburgh next spring. So maybe. This, I, I can't wait. I have so many dreams. So I think that's it about the knitting retreat. No, it's actually that Saturday, which is this is going to be in 9th till 11th of June, it's, it's two weeks from now, and that Saturday is actually going to, is actually the Knit in Public, official Knit in Public day, or International Knit in Public, or something, I don't know, I don't remember the name, so we are going to try to do something around that, which will be amazing, um, yeah, I will definitely do some vlogging, I just really hope that I can borrow a camera, because my phone is not behaving very well it is most days it is dead before 10 o'clock in the morning so it's really hard for me with that so i am going to have to borrow a camera from somewhere i don't really know where i will get the camera but i need a camera for that weekend and i will do some vlogging and it will probably be a lot about it on instagram as well so i think that's it for knitting with it i think that's it for now I didn't really have mm, much to talk about, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you later, and if you have any questions or feedback or anything, feel free to message me on Ravelry or Instagram or send me an email, and you can also head on over to the Ravelry group where, where there is a questions and suggestions thread and lots of chatter going on, so I hope that I will see you there, so bye!